It's another windy day in beautiful London. Hello, sir. Hello, Mr. Holmes. My name is Charles Williams, and I need your help. Have a seat and tell me your problem. There's no time. The police are after me. I am a fire alarm system agent, and I sell rich people fire alarms to protect their mansions. Yesterday morning, an old gentleman named Jimmy Jack Johnston stopped by my office and asked me to come and visit his mansion. He said he had an old fire alarm system, and since he was renovating his mansion, he wants to replace it. He offered me a large sum of money for just looking around his mansion. How could I say no to that? So last night I paid him a visit. I hardly saw any of his mansion because he was talking so much. Once it started to get late, I had to go so I wouldn't miss the last train to Clarksville. His mansion is four hours away from my home. As I left his house, I remembered I left my cane there, but I couldn't go back because I would miss the train. Once I got home, I was the first man to see the morning paper, and there it was on the front page. Jimmy Jack Johnston, murdered. The police found the murder weapon, a cane with my initials on it. Good morning to you, Mr. Holmes, and I see that Mr. Johnston's murderer is here with you. Great. We'll put him behind bars. Good day. Help me, Holmes. I didn't do it. Help me! I can't leave my office without my magnifying glass. I call him Mr. Randy. My dear friend Watson sent me a candy cane. Unfortunately, I can no longer enjoy it after the case of the red and white body. I am Sherlock Holmes, private investigator. I am investigating the case of Mr. Johnston's murder. Yes, I know who you are. It's a privilege to be working with you, Mr. Holmes. Please. Feel free to ask anything you want, and I'll do my best to help. Where is Mr. Williams? I want to have a word with him. He's being interrogated. Come again later, and you'll be able to talk to him. Mind if I borrow the screwdriver? Not at all, Mr. Holmes. Thank you. One should never be without a screwdriver when there's murder <laughs> afoot. You must be Maxine, Mr. Johnston's maid. Yes, yes I am. And you are? I am Sherlock Holmes, private investigator. I am investigating the case of Mr. Johnston's murder. Murder? Oh, I see. I'm sorry I can't help you much. Like I told the nice officers, I left the Johnston's mansion right after Mr. Williams arrived. So I have no clue what happened there. I see. Thank you. Good morning, Mrs. Williams. I believe you've heard the news regarding your son, the late Mr. Jimmy Jack Johnston. Yes, I have. I just don't understand how it happened. I mean, my son didn't even know about my and Mr. Johnston past. Past? Yes. When I was a young girl, Mr. Johnston wanted me to marry him. I didn't want to because of his evil nature. He was a butterfly collector and did other evil stuff. I married my husband, Geoffrey Williams, and never heard from Mr. Johnston again. I see. Quite frankly, I can't be sad over Mr. Johnston's death. He was an evil, evil man. I mean, butterflies. Really. But I don't believe my son would have murdered him. There must be another explanation. Thank you for your help, Mrs. Williams. May I borrow this lovely candle? Yes, but please bring it back before it gets dark. I shall do so. Darkness seems all the darker with murder. <laughs> um, what's that? This is Mr. Jimmy Jack Johnston's coat. What's this inside the pocket? Looks like a note to me. Marvelous. I'll take these matches with me. Um, what's that? 
This appears to be the late Jimmy Jack Johnston's body. According to police, his body was burned by the young Charles Williams. Here are some remains of Jimmy's clothes. This cane belongs to Charles. It has his initials on it. It also has blood on it. That button triggers the fire alarm, but it doesn't work. The alarm system appears to be shut down. I suspect this place has been undergoing renovations lately. That crack in the wall looks a bit odd. The flame went out. There's a soft breeze coming from this crack. Yet this is not an external wall. Interesting fact. There may be a secret chamber over there. I better talk to Charles. Perhaps he saw something while he was here last night. Got it. I want to ask you if Mr. Johnston showed you his mansion while you were there last night. Yes, he did. Are there any secret chambers in the mansion? Not that I know of. Have you examined his fire alarm system? Barely. He said he would show me the system's blueprints, but we started to drink wine and it started to get late, so we set another appointment for tomorrow. Ha ha! A secret safe! It looks like the mansion's blueprints, along with those of the fire alarm installed in this mansion. This big window is facing north. There's a cotton curtain covering it. I see no special evidence here. I've got the fire alarm system blueprints. Let me see. Now I understand it all. Someone deactivated the system. That's why it doesn't work anymore. How do I reactivate it? That's easy. Just set the yellow wire to value 2, the green wire to value 3, and the blue wire to 5. I just received a telegram saying a fingerprint with blood on it was found at the crime scene. The fingerprint belongs to Charles Williams. You should head back there, Mr. Holmes. The inspector would like to talk to you. So, you think the case is closed? Yes, we have Charles's fingerprints at the scene. We have a murder weapon and a body. The court's juries will have an easy decision to make. I'm not sure about that, so hold your horses. A bloody fingerprint that appears to belong to Charles Williams. It wasn't here before. That can only mean one thing. I've solved the case. Now let's catch the bastard who did it. Now the system is working again. Ha <laughs> A pile of autumn leaves. I spilled absinthe on the leaves. Fire! Fire! I have to get out! So, the dead are rising from their graves, am I right, Mr. Jimmy Jack Johnston? Wait, I don't understand. What just happened here? It's very simple. 
Mr. Johnston wanted to win over Mrs. Williams' heart more than twenty years ago. Since she didn't want him, he swore to get revenge. And what's a better way to hurt her than to send her son to prison? Mr. Johnston asked Mr. Williams to check his fire alarm system, even though he has a state-of-the-art alarm system. He made sure Maxine, the maid, saw Mr. Williams right before she left. He also hid Mr. Williams' cane, so Mr. Williams would leave it at his mansion. Mr. Johnston placed the burned flesh of some poor animal in his fireplace and covered Mr. Williams' cane in blood. It could have been the perfect crime if not for that mysterious fingerprint on the curtain. I knew it wasn't there before. That could only mean one thing. Someone wanted to make sure we thought Mr. Williams was the murderer. Since Mr. Williams was behind bars during the time the fingerprint appeared, I knew he wasn't the killer. Maxine the maid was at the police station the whole time. She's not the murderer. Mrs. Williams lives four hours away, so she's not the murderer either. Only one option left, someone who was close enough to place the fingerprint and disappear. Perhaps from a secret chamber? I created the illusion of fire using the alarm and the smoke, which caused Mr. Johnston to take leave of his hideout and seek a safe place. He'll go to a safe place, all right. Our prison is a very safe place. Ho, ho, ho! Well, I have to telegraph Watson and let him know that that's not really his aunt he's staying with, but Dr. Moriarty!